Okay, we're ready, guys? What are we talking about? No, I forgot to change the chapter. We're in chapter 6. And we're going to do uh, quite a bit more than the book teaches. The book doesn't teach rectify or repair well. So you all need to take pretty good notes. And, of course, the slides are up there on, on Blackboard, too. Uh, this is a present for me to you. That's the only time I'm going to give that to you, but it's on the website. If you lose it, what does that mean? You have to run, you have to run your next one off yourself. Everybody understand that? This is our formula sheet for this semester. And there's a lot of formulas in the class. And it would be very hard memory work. So we're going to let you use these things this semester when we take tests, uh, which is pretty good. Because, uh, you know, it's only one term and there's so much to, to learn about, about about semiconductors. Front and back, guys. Front and back. So it's pretty good size. Uh, first of all, uh, I'm going to tell you all a little bit more about, uh, about transformers than uh, what the book covers. Does the book cover transformers in there anyway? Like I said, this is a new version of the book. And I haven't had a chance to go through it uh, from cover to cover. And this is a pretty good book to teach. It's got a bunch of symbols. It's got a bunch of electrical control stuff. And uh, they pulled a bunch of stuff out. This is the same author that writes the motor control book. And he puts a lot more information in there we do. But I don't see anything on transformers. But to understand SCRs and that kind of stuff, and triacs and diacs and all that kind of stuff, and we need to have a pretty good feel of transformers. We don't have to be able to design them. So basically, we do one or two things with transformers. What do we do? Yeah, and what do we say? Step up or step down? But what? But what are we stepping up and stepping down? Voltage. But remember, the current is moving in the opposite direction. So if we step the voltage up, the current is going down, which sounds opposite of Ohm's law, but remember, we're not talking about the load, we're talking about the source. And the source is delivering power, right? You understand. So we have different cores. Most of the time we use what we call a, a, a metal core, and it's laminated. So the symbol they usually use, which is correct, is we come over here, we draw a primary. Sometimes they draw them the same size. But normally what I'll try to do is draw the primary big, and then we'll draw this guy small. And then they're supposed to put these little dashed lines over here. And what do those represent? Those represent the core. And we know now we use that laminated core. Why? To, yeah, reduce the eddy current. To break up that dang big old conductor that would be in there in the center. So what we want that metal to do is we don't want it to be a conductor. We want it to concentrate a magnetic field, right? So we have a we have what we call a primary, and the primary basically is not really defined until you really hook hook it up. Even though some commercial transformers will say that uh, the primary is the the transform the, the the leads that are pointing back toward the source, right? I understand that. And then what's the other side we call that? Yeah, we call it secondary, and these are the sides of the transformer that are pointing toward the load. That makes sense. And what we have is well, what we have is what we have a turns ratio, and the turns ratio depends on what the output is to the input. So if I came over here and had just about a hundred volts, of course, if I don't tell you it's RMS, it is RMS, and this thing had a had a, a, a ratio of four to one. Then what would be the output voltage? Huh? Yeah, it'd be 25 volts. So that means for every four turns on the primary, which would be the high voltage side, we would have one turn on the secondary. Now most of the time it's to one, so most of the time they'll say it has a ratio of four. And you take for granted that the other one is what? One. Everybody okay? Now we have different ways. We have what we call multi we have what we call multi-winding transformers. For, no, let's look at the first one first, because that'll explain this. We have what we call tap transformers. So what I might do is I might come over here on the... Pro so if you looked at the transformer up on the pole, what they do is they have multiple taps where they can come in and they can connect the internal line to. 
Now, what they're trying to do on your side over here is they're trying to give you 120 volts there. Well, the problem is that voltage coming over that line is not guaranteed to be precise, right? Understand. So if you looked at the transformer on the pole, they could hook it up to different windings and change the ratio, right, to understand, to get that as close to 120 volts as they possibly can. But it's not, odds are it's not going to be. I think here we measured, did we measure here? 100, 115 or so volts. Yeah, we measured over here, right? So that's just, uh, NEC calls this the optimal voltage. So instead of, Instead of NEC, National Electric Code, jumping all around, they use 120 and 240 for the two voltages. But we know that in real life they could do what? They could vary, right? Uh, I could also come over here uh, on the on the primary, on the secondary side, and have multiple paths. So what would that give me on the on the secondary side? So let's say I come over here and I had a sec, I had a uh, over here. As soon as I get my color up there. So I have a primary. I'm not going to draw the core, by the way. It's just, and then over here on the secondary, I have a tap right there. I have a tap right here. I have a tap right there. Okay. Well, then I could come over here, and I would probably make that guy right there common. And then I would get one voltage right there, right? I get a low voltage right there. I would get a medium voltage right there. And I'd get my high voltage right there. So we can get multiple voltages off the sign transfer. Might be. It's just I'm, I didn't draw the ratios right. I mean, we could have on, on the on the on the old the tubes, the test tubes. We used to. I mean, the vacuum tubes. We used to fire up the the, the cathode heater with 6.3 volts, but yet my DC was 250 volts. So we'd have a little old tap down at the bottom of the transformer to get my watt to get my heater voltage for my cathode, and then I'd have another tap way off, and that was a pretty popular transformer because that, because uh, the plate voltage standardly was uh, two or 300 volts up there on the standard radio. I mean, so it got on up. We had, we had a guy that brought in a, a metal detector, and it was big, and the loop on it was probably eight foot diameter. What it was made to do was it had ropes on it, and you could drop it out of the bottom of the boat, out of the back of the boat, and you could troll around. And what he was doing is he was wanting to find motors. He said, you'd be surprised how many boat motors there are in the river. People do what? Uh, they don't tighten them down. They put down that thing that jumps off, and now it goes down to the bottom of the river. So, and it wasn't working, but it used tubes. And when the guy wired it, they wired it with all brown wire. We didn't have a schematic on it, but it was it was vacuum tubes. Ran off 12 volts, but it had a had a had an inverter on it, kind of like what you buy for your car to step voltages. Oh, Al picked that thing up and got into that 250 volts. <laughs> it was shocking, and he was jerking around, and he was trying to hand it to us <laughs> like this. <laughs> It was so funny. We got him out there and now we got we put the big loop out the window over there in an A two uh A two oh six and dropped the big cable out the back and had Al out there moving a garbage can, a trash can around, a big old metal can. And somebody asked us what he was doing out there and we said he's majoring in sanitation engineering. <laughs> <laughs> because of, true story. Al is still one of my best friends. Believe that or not. So the main transformer uh, that we use a lot in power supplies, and we're going to use, and, and this is what Alabama Power uses, is what we call a center tap transformer. CT, so we call this a button center tap transformer. And what we do is we come over here on the secondary side, on the low voltage side, and we, I'm going to draw it bigger so I'll have enough room, by the way, even though other because it's a step down transformer. And what we do, right in the very center, we put a tap. And when we rate it, we'll say, so we're going to be using a 12.6 volt. It's a 12.6 volt 
C T. What does the C stand for? Center. So when we talk about the when we rate the voltage, we rate the voltage from here to here. So that would be about 12.6 volts if it's running at its full load. So what would I get between here and here? Yeah, we get 6.3 and we get 6.3. That makes sense. Now, this is what Alabama Power uses up there. So what they do, and, and understand, uh, this side over here can be grounded. I mean, grounded. As soon as you go through the transformer, the ground is gone. Because we don't couple through ground. We couple magnetically from one side to the other, which means on the secondary, I can ground any lead I want to. And what, what does Alabama Power ground? Yeah, they ground the center ones. So we come up here and they take this one. It's connected to ground. This is the metal wire coming into the house. So you when you look at your down drop in your house, you got three wires. One of them's a metal wire. That's the one that the other ones are wrapped around. That's your ground. And then you have two insulated wires. We don't have to insulate the ground because electricity is looking for ground, right? So it has no potential for ground. So the ground wire does not have to be insulated. And this is what comes in your box. Across here, optimum voltage would be 240 volts. Between here and here, we get what? 120. And between here and here, we get a 120. And that's the way your house is. So 240 is not referenced to ground, but your 120 is. Now your 240, your, your it's, it's referenced to ground back here. So you're still going to ground your metal cases, right? You understand? Now why don't we ground metal cases or metal chassis on the, all these appliances? So you'll never get shot, right? Because they're made out of metal, and I run wire all through there. And Wire shaves off, right? So my vacuum cleaner sitting there moving around, my dryer's bouncing around. If those wires come loose and they rub against the metal, eventually they'll do what? Yeah, they'll short. If they do, what's going to happen? It's going to blow. It's going to blow your breaker because it's grounded, right? You understand? So your dry, I say your washing machine. Your washing machine runs off 120, and it's grounded anyway. But your 240 is not, the voltage is not referenced to ground, right? You understand? It's all the way across. So that's our colors. So what's our colors we use in house wiring? By the way, what we do is we don't call this uh, ground. This comes in the house. And then what we do in our house is we, we ground our meter box. So this relay right here is regrounded. So we have two grounds. So over there on your telephone pole, you'll see a copper wire coming down the side where your transformer's at. And it'll go into a ground rod, right? You understand. In your house where your meter's at, you'll see a copper wire. should have a copper wire coming there and go into a ground rod. And now what we get in the house is uh, we have two wires up here. We have what we call our grounds. And then we have our neutrals that are connected to the same wire. And we call this ground. So a neutral, and, 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 and we call these two, and we refer to these as hot. So we have hots and neutrals. Now what's the difference between ground and neutral? Huh? There's a lot of difference between this ground wire right here and that, that white wire. So you, this is going to be white. Now, depending on what you're running, single phase or, or uh, I'm not single phase, 120, your hot will be black. 240, you will have a hot, a black would be hot, and then a red would be the other hot. But we don't run the neutral to, I don't run the neutral to my watering, or I'll run a ground to my watering. The neutral, so the neutral is white. Black has... The ground has no insulation on it. If it does, it's going to be green. A lot of your uh, appliances will use a ground wire and it will be colored, right? You understand. But if you look inside the Romax cable, the cable that I'm running in my house, here it is right here. 
So this is, we call this Romax, by the way, or this is called 14-2. It's a 14-gauge wire with a gram. This is neutral. This is hot. This is ground. If I took an ohm meter between my ground and my neutral, it's going to measure pretty close to zero ohms. Make sure you do that with power off, right? So what's the difference between this one and that one? Anybody know? Well, they don't, we don't care. Wires don't carry them. They carry current. Right. They carry current. Now, we, we create a voltage drop, right? Wires don't carry voltage. They carry current. It's their function. It's like your veins don't carry blood pressure. They carry blood. Now, they create pressure, right, when they push against them. So, think of, think of current like your blood. So, the power source does what? Applies current. And then we push that against something, which creates a voltage drop when we push. We create the force when we push against it, right? But the voltage is not moving. It's being created by the current doing what? Pushing against it. And then, of course, that's what causes power. But the function of the conductor is to carry the current. So what's the difference? Well, the difference is this guy is supposed to carry current. This guy is not. There's, possible, there's not supposed to be any current in the ground. The only time there's ever current in the ground is when you have a problem. So the NEC calls this the grounded current carrying conductor. They call this the ungrounded. So they don't use any National Electric Code don't use the term hot neutral. They call this the ungrounded current carrying conductor. They call this the grounded current carrying conductor. And they call this ground. This guy is not supposed to carry current. Now, unless you saw my, the hot water heater in my father-in-law's house wire. He, he used this as one of his current carrying conductors. This guy here is not supposed to carry any current. Y'all understand that? This hooks up to the ground of a chassis. How much current is supposed to be on the ground of the chassis? Nothing. Right? This is in there for safety. This guy right here is in there to carry current. So a, a ground fault indicator does not look at ground. A ground fault indicator looks at these two wires right here. And understanding what we know, the current going out, this black wire, should be exactly the same as the current on the mid. If the currents don't match, that means something's going somewhere, right? We call them G, we call them GFCIs, ground fault circuit detectors. So it might not even be going to this ground. It might be going to somebody else's ground, right? You understand? Uh, but it will detect it because these two these two match. So current current conductor. We call that they call this in the watt. We call this neutral. But this is our grounded current carrying conductor. This is an ungrounded current carrying conductor. And this is ground. Everybody okay? They had a little lesson there. Yeah, so, so, so hot and neutral is an electrician term. It's not a national electrical code book term. It's an electrician term. So they call the grounded current carrying conductor, they refer to that as neutral. So 240 would have two hots, right? You understand? Two two ungrounded current carry conductors. But it's still referenced to ground somewhere. But if you got between a ground if you got between a two forty and ground, you'd be on hundred and twenty. You wouldn't be on a two forty circuit, right? That makes sense. So we have different types. So y'all want y'all okay on transformers. So first of all, if I know the input voltage, how do I calculate the output voltage? By the way, uh, transformers. Uh, we have commercial grade transformers and we have industrial grade transformers. Uh, industrial grade transformers are going to label the lead H. And what do you think H stands for? What we call the high side. They're not going to they're not going to measure the low side with L's because L's is used for inductors. So they label the low low side with X's. Make sense. And so if I wanted to step up, I'd bring my I'd use the X's for my primary and the H's for my secondary. If I wanted to step down, I would use Y. 
the H is for my primary and my X is for my secondary. Now when you fuse it, you can fuse it on either side. But over here, if you fuse it, this is not going to protect the transformer. This is going to protect the load. If you fuse it over here, it's going to protect the load and the transformer. But remember, if you're trying to get one amp of load over here, you're not going to have one amp of load. You're not going to have one amp in the primary. Everybody understand that? So if I'm saying I'm going to run a one amp load and I put a one amp fuse in my transformer, our transformer is going to flat burn up without ever blowing the fuse. Because remember, this is that divide ratio, right? You understand? So to calculate your primary current, what would you do? You take the power of the out of the output you're looking for, and you divide it by this. You divide, you divide that by the watt, by the primary voltage, and that would give you your current. And then you would increase it by. Uh, we could look at any C. It's, it's more than you think. So we don't use that thing. We're going to give more than that, right? It's more than 125 percent, so it's really, really high when uh, EDC uh, uses the primary. So these are the two types of transformers we're going to use. We're going to use center taps in power supplies, or we're going to use untapped, or we use both. Now, a center tap can serve as can be used as an untapped, right? You understand, but an untapped cannot be used as a center tap. So what we might not do is we just might not use that lead right there. So if I don't use that lead, then we'll get the full voltage, right? You understand? Or I could use this voltage right here and not use the other one, right? So, uh, so that's what we're going to do. The transform, the trainer has got a center tap transform. I think it's 12.6. I think. Uh, we can look. Let me look real quick. Now, mine up here, I've actually got Got a 12.6 12 12 12 12 all the way across, or 6.3 on the center tap, right? Everybody okay? Uh, we also have multi winding transformers. The trainer itself actually uses a multi winding transformer. And so if we look at this, I can pass this around. So it's got one winding over here all by itself, completely isolated. The only way these guys would be made uh, to uh, common is if you connect them. So we have one transformer. We have a one amp nine volt transformer in here. We got a 16 volt center tap transformer in here, and we got a 12. This is 12. We got a 12.6 volt center tap transformer. The 12.6 uh, center tap transformer is rated at 250 milliamps. The 32 volt center tap transformer is rated at two amp. Is rated at one amp, and then the uh, nine nine volt is rated at one amp. Can you see that? And then here's the primary. 60 hertz, 120 volts across. Then we would get these voltages. If I don't give it 120 volts, then we won't get these voltages, right? But they're going to be what? They're going to be close. This is out of the trainer. It's bad. And how'd it go bad? Well, odds are they hooked up the ground and the scope wrong and burnt the transformer. So we really need to fuse. Uh, when they calculated the fuse for the transformer, what they did is they added all those currents together. And odds are we never ever use all those currents. So what happens is when they hook their, their ground on their scope up wrong, uh, so that guy, let me see. Uh, what he did is he, he put the ground right here and had a ground right there. Y'all understand that? So remember, an oscilloscope is not a meter. The black lead on a oscilloscope is ground. A meter is just common for the meter. It's not even common for the circuit. So you can take the black lead of a meter and put it where in a circuit? Anywhere you want to. So if you want to measure the voltage drop across R1, you could put it across R1. If you want to measure the voltage drop across R1 with a scope, you cannot put it across R1. So this is where you either got to use Kirchhoff's law, right? What is, so if I measure the voltage over here, and then I measure the voltage over here, what I, what could I do? I can subtract the two and then get the voltage. Or we can tell our scope to do that. When you take AC, they should show you how to do that. 
Oops. Okay. So when we get into the, the single phase transformers, and this is in the book, we have three, three types of single phase transformers. We have what we call half wave, which we've already looked at. So we have what we call what? Half wave. Then we're going to have what we call full wave center tapped. And then we're going to have what we call full wave bridge. Huh? No, it's not a wheat stone bridge. Yeah, it does, and that's why it's got the name Bridge. I mean, so that's how it got the name Bridge, because it's in that diamond shape. It is not a Weedstone Bridge, it is a diode rectifier, that we call it a bridge rectifier. But these are what, this is a half-wave rectifier, these are what? These are full waves. Okay, understand. Uh, this one we could do on a, just a, we don't have to use a tap transformer, Right, you understand. This right over here requires a tap transformer, this or that. And we'll talk about, and that, that gives this one the advantage right here, even though it uses more diodes, because a tap transformer costs more than a what? An untapped transformer. So these are our three basic single phase power supplies. In three phase, we either use this guy or we use I'll have to show you all that, or this guy, but it's, it's going to be three phases instead of two outputs. And I don't even know if they call that a bridge. I'll show you all three phase rectifier. It's real easy to draw. And that's the only thing the book is, power supplies, that's about all the book is worth right there. Because it don't tell you how to calculate it. He says, okay, here's a single phase power supply. He says it's not used, but he's wrong there. These guys are used all over the place. It's just that. And they, it gives good reasons uh, for uh, Okay, so this is what we're going to talk about. And we've talked about, we've talked about half wave already. Are we okay? Yeah. So what I've done here is, uh, is uh, and I should take this up, by the way. Oh, I've got it. So what I'm doing is I've got a, I've got a transformer up here. So here's the circuit. Now here's the actual transformer. It's a 12.6 volt center tap transformer, but we're not using the center tap. So the center tap is this blue wire, and I don't have it connected to anything. But we'll connect it later. So what I'm doing is I'm using the two outsides. So that means according to the transformer, if I measure across these two outsides, what should it measure? It should measure 12.6. Okay, I've got a diode right here. I've got the anode pointing back toward the source, so this will be a positive supply. And then I'm using a 1K load. Okay, so what voltage am I going to measure across the 1K load? We've already showed you all how to do that. We did it last class. I should be able to take that now and run it. So, guys, how do we get started? I need to get rid of some of these PowerPoints. I need to close this now. That's the only one to book. What's my... Okay. So, I regulate power supplies. There's the three. There's out of the other book. And we're doing what halfway. We got the anode point, so y'all don't know where to start at. So what's the formula for halfway rectifiers? PC average equals what? V peak over pi. V peak out over pi. So the problem is when we have this 12.6, what is that? 
that they take, they take pay. Come on, guys, help me out. It's neither one. It's RMS. If I give you an AC voltage, it is RMS. If we don't say it's VP to peak and we don't say, it's just like if I, if I give you the number 10, it, is that negative or positive? If I don't give you the sign, we assume it's positive. If it's negative, I tell you it's negative. If I don't tell you negative, we we is positive, right? You understand that? So in AC, if I give you a voltage in AC and I do not say peak and I do not say peak to peak, it is RMS, period. So when we threw all these votes, so when I say that 12.6 volts, that's what? RMS. But my formula says what? My formula says the peak out over five. Okay, guys, so get me started. First of all, I've got to find VP. Okay, so how do I find VP? Divided by what? Okay, so I'd say V peak secondary. We call that V peak secondary because that's what I should, if I put my scope, that's what I should measure. Should be what? Should be 12.6 divided by 0 0.707. volts. Now I should put P down there. Over here I didn't put anything, right? Okay. But the problem is this don't say VP. This says what? VP count. So what's the peak out equal to? Yeah, it's going to be 17.8 minus 0.7. Okay, so that's going to be 17.1 volts. Everybody okay? Now I can calculate my average output. So now I can say, okay, my DC, my volts DC across my 1K resistor should be what? 17.1 divided by 3.14. About 5.5 volts. And that should be folks DC, right? Okay. So now we know about what's supposed to happen. So now when I come over here and take my meter, and I'm not going to measure the secondary vote, but when I take my meter, which is right there, and I'm going to take my meter, I got jumpers on it, and I'm going to put it across the output. And where's my other meter lady? That's the red one, black one, green. I've got them on the same page. Okay, so here's my load. So I've got it on. Why is my meter showing these at zero? My meter showing zero. It's on AC. That gets people hurt, right? Understand that. What's the average? What's the average value? What's the DC average of a cycle? Okay, so I'm putting over an AC. Okay. DC still measuring zero. Oh. Let's go duh together. Everybody go duh. I didn't have to turn up. 5.9 volts. Not too bad, right? So that means the input voltage is probably high, and it is because we got a 1K resistor, and we're not loading this thing near to what it's rated at. In fact, if we measured, if we measured our secondary voltage with a meter, so I'm gonna go. Uh, I should have left that one there. Okay. Measure zero votes. Why is it measure zero votes? Because it's on DC. Okay, I'm going to flip it over to AC. Uh, oops. So the output is actually about 13.9 volts. And it's 12.6, but that's fine. You right? understand? But look, even though we didn't measure the output, we took it at its face value, 
we we calculated 5.5 and we came up and got what? We measured 5.9. Good gracious, what? That's 400 millivolts. The difference between our what? Our our calculated and our measured. So most of the time you can take these guys at their face value. It's just you got to understand. Odds are we're never going to load the transformer to its maximum value. We're always going to underload it, right? So that means if it's underloaded, then the output voltage should be a little higher than what it used to be. But that's not pretty neat. So there's halfway. Everybody okay? Calculate it all the way down to that. And of course, I'm looking at it with the oscilloscope. Uh, here's my uh, two. And you should notice that the blue is slightly less than the green. It's hard to see on there. But, but uh, here's my output. Here's my input. Input and AC into it. What am I getting now? Halfway, but we call this what type of DC? We call it pulse AC DC. Can't use this on electronics. Book brings up a situation that says, well, uh, yeah, look at your book on page, uh, 133. It's a pretty cute application. I didn't think about this. But we set up a real neat circuit. I'll have to draw it up to you. We had a circuit that looked like a series circuit. You had two light switches that looked like they, they were in series. And then we had two light bulbs. And if you followed it through, you'd look like it looked like the, the switches were in series with a light bulb. If you turn both switches on, both lights came on, which made sense. If you turn one switch on, one light would go off and one would stay on. If you turn the other one, they would flip. But if, if you looked at it, that would drive people. We could take that thing in DC over there and it just freak those people out. But what we were doing was using, if you looked real close, you saw these little old leads coming up from the bottom and we had diodes in there. So what we did is we had two diodes pointing in the same direction. So on this switch had a, had like the cathode point that way and we had one diode with the cathode point that way and then the other switch we swapped so what was happening was the first one it would buy it would when this one was closed it would bypass the switch right you understand it was really neat and it would bypass the light and go to the other to, to the other light and, uh, and what we were doing is we'd get we were giving each light would only get halfway and so they didn't come on near as bright so if you look at the, the figure on page uh, on figure six dash four, what do you see? This is a very cheap light demo. So when they close the switch, it bypasses the diode and puts full AC on the light bulb. When they open the switch, then you get halfway. So they call this a, a two position light demo, which is it's pretty cute, right? And we basically did the same thing. We bypassed the switch. So when we flipped it, we bypassed the switch. And then it would hit the diode and it would bypass the other diode. It was really neat. You'd have to see the circuit. I'll draw it up for you. We had it on a big old nice wood board. It had two big old nice light bulbs sticking up there. And we take it in, take it in AC class. Break those people out. It's like telling me I proved on flaw wrong. Okay, so y'all feel comfortable with halfway? Everybody okay? Y'all see those formulas on the sheet? Every one of them's on there, right? And of course, all I have to do to change the polarity is do what? So this would be a positive supply. Look at the schematic. I know it's a positive supply, uh, but why do I know it's a positive supply? All we have to do is look and see which way the the anode is pointing, or which way the diode is pointing. And if you see the anode pointing toward the source, it's a positive supply. If you see the cathode pointing toward the source, it's a negative supply. But there's no way in the world I can route the other alternation up here without creating a short circuit. So we got to have another method. So how would I make it? So all I have to do is just swap the, just swap the diode, right? Everybody understand that? Tell me to do it. That's it. We did the, you want to see it? Uh, we got real low voltage here, so I'm not going to.
turn it off. But if y'all did this, I would get upset. So now we have the cathode. We have the cathode. Y'all can see that pretty good. Pointing toward the what? Here's the source. And, uh, so there's my AC still in. I don't need my meter anymore. So here's my substrate. So notice the AC is still the same, but now what do we get now? And this still should measure what? About 5.5 volts. But now it should measure negative to what I call common. Of course, we got to take out, we talked about VP calorie. You okay there? So we already got past this slide. So we subtract the diode. And we talked about the diode rule of thumb. We've already been past here. PIV. So what PIV rating should I have on this diode? Or, or reverse breakover voltage. So I'll use the term PIV for peak and first voltage. What should we do? What should we have to block? When it's reverse bias. What's it going to have to block? It's going to have to drop VP, right? So what's VP? What do we calculate VP to be? 17 volts. So I need to probably at least double that, right? You understand that? So we're looking at probably 30 volts. So this is a one in. This is a one in uh, 401. I think I think the breakover voltage on that is 50 volts. It should be. But where would I find that at? In those data sheets, right? Now later on, when we put a capacitor on here, when we put, when we put a filter on here, the diode's going to have to drop peak to peak. Because what we're going to do is we're going to charge the capacitor up to peak, and then when the when, the, when it goes peak, right, you understand. So halfway, it's just peak. Here, if we put a diode in here, it would be peak. Uh, here's negative, halfway, we already looked at that, so here's our full wave. So when we get to full wave, our formula is going to change from V peak over pi to what? To V peak over pi. Because now we're getting the full DC average of both alternations. And they're not canceling each other out because they're on both sides of the line. So what we got to do is figure out somehow to steer either the negative alternation to the top or the positive alternation to the bottom, depending on the other. Everybody okay? So you can use this one right here, but notice I didn't put that in my formula sheet at all because this is this guy right here sticks with me because that's what it is. That, so now we know, you know, when we talk about two pi rad, when we start dealing with on an AC when we start dealing with the circumference, two pi is going to be in there somewhere. <laughs> and so there it is. There's two pi right there, right? You can see it in there. So this is what a full wave is going to look like. So we're going to bring our AC in from our transformer or the line. We could bring it in from the line. We're going to bring it through a full wave rectifier. And over here, we're going to, here is going to be a positive supply. So somehow we're going to steer off the, the negative alternation up to the top. Now what we're going to do is, the per, so, uh, so here the average would be what? This is VP out. Because this is cross there. So my DC, my volts DC should equal to what? 2 times 15 divided by pi. So what about 8, eight volts? And that's DC, folks. So how are we going to do that? Well, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use a center tap transfer. So we're going to call this a full wave center tap rectifier. So that's the name of this. Center tap waveform uses two diodes on the secondary and a center tap transfer. So what we're going to do, everybody okay? We've already talked about this. I didn't know that was it. So this is what we're going to do on our center tap transfer. By the way, in this, this 
really don't really make any, any difference. Uh, what happens on a regular transformer, if they just wind the transformers on top of each other, then when this is negative and positive, let's say it goes out, well, on your secondary side, it's going to be coming in. It's going to be going in, right? So this right here would be positive and this right here would be negative. If the transformers are wound on top of each other in the same direction. If you come over here and you reverse wind the secondary, then the secondary and the primary would have the same polarity. But most of the time, 99.99% of the time in power supplies, it means nothing anyway. Right? You understand. Uh, all they're doing here, some transformers have what they call polarity dots on them. And the polarity dots mean if you hook those up, this wire and this wire, if you hook them up, you take the dots on this side and put it on the top over here, and the dot on this side and put it on the top, then the secondary would be in phase with the primary. And that's what they're showing here. But it don't, in power supplies, it makes absolutely no difference that the secondary is positive when the giving you a, give, is on the negative alternation when the primary is on the positive alternation. So these dots mean nothing. In fact, they ought to go out there and race them. So what we're going to do, they call it grounded, but they don't have to ground it. This could be a common. So what we're doing is we're using the center tab as the common. We put two diodes in the other two leads. Here the anodes are pointing toward the source, so this is going to be a positive supply. So that means either I'm going to switch the load across this one, and how much would that be? This is 12.6 volts. We're either going to use this side of the transformer, and this side is not going to conduct, it's going to be reverse bias, or we're going to use this side of the transformer. The other one's going to be cut off. You understand why? So let's say if I if this is positive, what is the center tap relative to that positive? And we're in an instant in time, guys. We're not. This is going to switch pretty fast, right? Let me do a color that's different than what that is. So if this is positive then what is this going to be relative to that positive? It's going to be negative. Right, you understand? Now when I get right here, this is down here, so if this is positive, then this is going to be negative relative to its center down. Right, you understand? So if I follow this guy over here, this is going to put a positive right here. But I'm on this transformer now. What's this? What's this relative to right there? What's what's common relative to this? It's going to be negative, right? Of course, that's not going to be negative. The negative is going to be down here. Now I come over here as soon as I put that right there on that diode. What does that mean? I put the negative on the anode. So this guy right here is cut what? Oh, this guy here is cut off. Allows current flow to leave ground. Come flowing up here. Go up through the resistor, it's going to make this negative. Why is it going to go this way? Huh? It's off. So which way has it got to go? It's got to go up this way, and it's going to go back to the transformer and go up there. So current flow through the load was in that direction right there. That makes sense? But not the full transformer. Only one half of it. Y'all understand here? In fact, if this was a one amp transformer, we could get two amps out of it because we're only using what? Half of it at a time, which is pretty good. So what would happen on the next alternation? So what we're doing is, how did we go through it that time? We went through it that way, right? So what would I get on my output? I would get that. So let's change it. So what did we have up here a while ago? Okay, so up here, let's read it. So up here, no, so now this will be negative on the on the next alternation. This would be positive in respect to that negative, right? Understand, right? And then this right here would be negative in respect to that positive. So what we're doing is we're doing this outside, and then setting up the two in the center opposite of that. 
So that would put that positive right there. This guy here would do what? It would turn on. This guy right here would do what? Turn off. Current flow now would be out the ground. Come up through here through the resistor. That's going to be negative. Through it goes to the resistor. That's going to be positive. Which way is it going? Up or down? Yeah, it's going down back to that secondary right there. But notice the polarity of the load. It's exactly the same thing. Right? You understand? Y'all understand that? So what did we get? The first one we got that. If I look across the, di the resistor. The second one I got that. The next alternation I would get that. The next one I would get that. Now if I'm putting 60 cycles in, what's the frequency of my pulsating DC? No, this is a cycle, right? Here's an alternation coming in. This is a cycle coming out. A cycle is a repetition of a repetitive waveform, right? So my pulses would be occurring at 120 hertz. Y'all understand why? Because a cycle doesn't say it's a cycle only. A cycle is one repetition of a repetitive waveform. Is this a repetitive waveform? Okay, is this a repetitive waveform? But the problem is, is when I, as soon as I swap this and put it over there, I'm getting two pulses for every cycle over there. So the time between these pulses would be 8.3 milliseconds. The time between the pulses on a half wave would be 16.7 milliseconds. Now, when is this going to become an important? Well, it's going to become important when we start filtering this thing. <coughs> So it would take a bigger filter to maintain the load on a half wave because this is going to have to maintain it for 16.7 milliseconds, right? This guy is going to have to maintain the load for 8.3 milliseconds. <coughs> half wave, but well, we're only getting half the transform, but that's no big deal. So, okay, so let's hook this guy up. So we got a 12.6 volt trans. Now, when we give the size of the transformer, of a center tap transformer, we give it all the way across. So when I look at this transformer, it says what? It don't tell me 6.3. Huh? I hear buzzing. It's not good. I don't see where I got something shut. What happened to my dog? Oh, my dog goes. So I gotta find another diary. Huh? Yeah. Y'all gotta let me know. Okay, let me figure out how to pause this thing. Yeah, let's take a two minute break. Guess what I can't get to? Can't get to my controls to pause my lectures. So what am I? My bad. Let's, let's close this up. Now, the only thing, oh, click here to pause. Oh, okay. So, now I gotta pause this music. I need to okay. I had to do that a while ago.
figure it out later. So what we're trying to do is we're going to set up a halfway center, a full, I'm sorry, a full wave center tap using a 12.6 volt transformer, center tap transformer. And I want y'all to calculate what we should expect on the output of this thing. How many diode drops are you going to use? One. Only one diode is turned on. The other one's turned off. So the current flow still only goes through one diode, right? So when you set, when you calculate V peak out, you're going to use one diode drop. What are you going to use for V peak secondary? Got a 12.6 volt transformer. What are you going to use for V peak secondary? No, we're just trying to figure out, we, we're, we're trying to figure out how to get the VP gal. We will eventually use this. This has nothing, we're trying to calculate the voltage on the secondary so I can calculate this, right? You understand that? So this is the formula you use to calculate DC on the output thing. So guys, help me out. What are we going to use to calculate the output, what's the secondary voltage? It's a 12.6, it's a 12.6 center tap transformer. What are we going to use? Yeah, but what are we going to use to calculate VP? I got to stop, I got to start somewhere, right? So what are we going to use to calculate VP? I mean, y'all giving good, y'all giving right answers, but it's not the one I'm looking for. Okay, so let's think about this. Not 6.1, 12.6. I'm only using one half of the transformer at a time. I'm not. I'm never using 12.6 volts. I'm only using one half of the transformer. Look at the formula for calculating the secondary voltage for the for a uh, full wave. Y'all see it says full wave secondary voltage on the formula sheet. I'm going to say V secondary divided by what? You'll see what formula I'm looking at? Yes or no? It says V secondary divided by what? Two. Because when they give you the secondary voltage, they give you the full voltage. But we're not using the full voltage. We're using what? One half of it. So to calculate the output voltage, what would I do? So I'd calculate VP secondary. So VP secondary would be equal to uh, VP. Of course, a lot of both times you can do it in your head, but mathematically it looked like this. So VP VP secondary would be good equal to twelve point six. Well, first let's VRMS VRMS secondary. What would be equal to 12.6 divided by what? 2. That gives me what? 6.3. Then V peak secondary is going to be equal to 6.3 divided by 0 0.707. So this is just a formula to me. It's kind of a waste of the time. If you understand, you're only using what? Half of the transform. We never use the whole thing at the same time. We do use the whole thing, but we don't use it at the same time. So while we're doing one alternation, we're using one side of the transformer, which is this guy right here. And how much voltage do we have right there? I have 6.3 volts. 
The next time I'm using this side of the transformer, what do I get? That's 6.3 volts. Now, of course, if I measure with my voltmeter, it's going to measure 12.6. It's just like if you go to your own output of your transformer. If I measure across my outlet, I measure 120 volts. If I go out on my water heater and measure across it, I'm going to measure 240 volts. Because your 120 volts is only, you're not getting the 240, you're getting what? We're only using, on those power plugs, you're only using one half of the transformer. So even though it's a, that is a 240 volt center tap transformer up on that pole, right, you understand, what do I get on my outlets? 120. Why? Because it's only connected to one side of the transformer. So your 240 breakers is connected to both sides. Your 120 volt breakers is only connected to what? To one. You look at your fuse box, there's two blades coming down there. We don't have one we can open up, but over in if we go over to the, no, we can't go over. Have you ever looked inside your breaker panel box and pull the breaker out, you'll see there's two blades available back there. Right? If you hook one on this side, 120, it'll hook into this and 120 breaker. If you do a 200, 120 on this side, it'll hook up this to, to the other 120. If you hook up a 240, it's going to hook up the wall, to both of them. And it's going to have two breakers. Or either out of two, most of the time your 240 breakers, if you look, is just, just nothing but two 120 volt breakers, right? You understand? And what is it? Yeah, they're spaced apart. If you looked at your, if you looked at your box, you'd have two blades coming in. This would be one 120, this would be the other, the next one would be another, another, right? You understand? So a 220 breaker would pop on both of them. You'd have two wires coming out of it, right, on the hot side. And then a 120 volt breaker would only go into one slot and you would have what? You'd have one wire coming in. So what we do is we just take the secondary voltage and we divide it by what? Two. And we use that to calculate VP count. And I, I don't know how else to teach it, guys. I mean, to me, that's one of the things that just stand out so close in, in my mind, you know, it's just straightforward to me as could be. So anybody got any ideas how to help to teach this? Because so somebody in this in this group, we got two people absent. Somebody in this group is going to use full transformer voltage when they calculate. I mean, I've taught the class so many. I've never taught a class, even this small, where somebody don't use that half of that on this center tap transformer don't use half the secondary voltage. Who's going to do that? Somebody will. Okay, so what am I going to expect to measure across this resistor? So now I now I got my math. Now I'm going to say, okay, uh, what's our what's our uh, VP secondary? It's going to be what? Still going to be 17.1 volt, right? No, I'm sorry. What's it gonna be? Should be half that. So V peak secondary is going to be equal to six point three divided by point seven oh seven. So V peak secondary is gonna be equal to what? What's that? 8.9 should be half of what it was before. V peak out, which is what we're going to do to uh, calculate this, is going to be 8.9 minus 0.7. Why don't I subtract 1.4? Somebody's going to do that. Why don't we subtract? They're going to see two diodes and they're going to say, well, it's 1.4 volts. Because we're only conducting current through how many at a time? One. Okay, so V peak out would be equal to what? 8.2 volts. Anybody got anything different, Thomas? Okay. Uh, then my then my volts DC output measured with the meter, of course it's going to be pulsating DC, is going to be 2 times 8.2 divided by 3.14. 2 V peak over 5.
So what should I measure? When I fire this puppy up. What's that? 5.2 volts. So we're getting the same boat as that while ago, only using half the input, right? Uh, are these diodes in parallel? It's another big problem we have in this class. Somebody in this class, are they in parallel? Huh? No. If they were in parallel, both sides of the diodes would be connected together. Right? You understand. These sides are connected together, but that don't make them in parallel. To be in parallel, both sides have to be connected together. Are these sides connected together? No, they're connected. To the, they're, these diodes are not in parallel. Somebody in this class, probably somebody that's absent, are going to hook them suckers up in parallel. And what they're doing is they're seeing this, and they're not seeing that. They don't see this right here. What's that? That's a transformer. So there's a transformer between those two sides. These are not in parallel. So don't hook them in parallel. If you do, you have a short circuit. So here's my two diodes. So what I've got, here's my blue lead. I'm going to use my blue lead for my common. So that's this red wire right here. It jumps over here to the bottom of my resistor. So there's my center tap. I've got one anode connected into this line right here, right? Then my other anode is the way it was before. So here's my other lead, even though I can move it over. I got both my anodes pointing toward the source. If you turn one anode toward the source and one cathode toward the source, you've got a short circuit. Short out your transform. Because what would it do? When this is positive, this would be on. Now this one down here would be on too, right? You understand? Right across your transfer. Okay, so hook up my meter. Should measure about 5.2 volts. So this is this. This is this. Not concerned with the input. Double check. Got my two cathodes connected together. I don't have my two anodes connected together. Uh, this one goes back to this yellow one, which is one side of my transformer. This is the yellow one, which is this one's in this. Y'all understand this, the breadboard on the trainer. It's really new. Uh, you can buy these breadboards individually, but uh, y'all know this breadboard, but these are what we, these are power rails right here. So these are common this way. And this becomes very important when you, when you take digital. Because digital, we run a lot of powers and we run a lot of grounds. Instead of us going all the way back to the power source, we can just run one positive and just jump all our ICs down there. So these are nice. These are nice uh, breadboards. The trainer has exactly the same breadboards in it. Uh, I think we got these through Radio Shack. And what's nice about the trade that you're in is that not only can it be your career, it can also be your hobby. There's all kinds of stuff you can do here. I mean, it's neat stuff. Just play around with stuff. You know, we order our parts from Jamico. You can get them pretty cheap. You know, have you a good fan in a fire extinguisher and go for it. Because <laughs> you're going to burn some stuff up. Okay. So we should expect about 5.2 volts. I'm going to come over and turn it on. My transformer is making a weird sound. It's not good. Your transformer in this class should not come. The transformer should not get hot. Uh, what makes a transformer hum if you're pulling a lot of current up? If I understand that. A transformer, this transformer right here should not get hot. So if it gets hot, what does that mean? Of course, the problem we have in, uh, is that the transformer is inside the train. So what we're doing is we're, but if, if you smell something, turn it off. The biggest problem we have is people getting the grounds on the stove wrong. Because the transformer is, the, the transformer on the trainer, I think, is grounded. We'll have to look at that. If, if the transformer is grounded, if the center tap on the transformer and the trainer is grounded, uh, we won't be able to use it for the next power supply. We'll have to use one of these guys. Because to do a full wave, uh, you, have, you can't have a ground. 
Transformer came from that. And we'll say that again. So let's, let me double check. So here's my ground. Right. Don't need that in there. Don't need that in there. Ground took up to the blue one. My yeah. There's my uh, there's my right here. And I hear my transformer making a noise. It's not good. So you shouldn't hear this transformer rump hum. It's uh, the lowest slope that would make noise. Now your big transformer out on your pole might hum, right? Because it's designed to handle a lot of current. Anode, anode, cathode, cranes. Took up right. So what do you think I'm gonna do? We'll check the diodes. So if you turn it on, you hear that transformer hum. It means something's wrong. So I need to check this. Put it on the diode scale, right? And how do I forward bias it? On the cathode. Okay. Positive lead on the anode. That looks good, right? Let's turn it around. I always reverse bias it. Notice it shows me about the same it does when I have my meter leads open. Okay. That looks good too. Making the noise on it's not even picked up anything. So let's see what it does. It just started doing it. So this breadboard gives you a break in the center, right? Load. I got it counted. I got it connected between the two cathodes. Here's my center tab. Meter back up. Red lead up there. I always double check your uh, your meter. Make sure you got it on the right scale. I guess, I mean, it's working. I don't know what's out here. So, uh, looks like everything's okay. Here's the, uh, here's the secondary. 
all the way across. So it's about 13.9, which is what it was a while ago. Okay. And uh, here's my load. We calculated 5.5. Uh, By the way, when you put it on AC, I'm going to swap it around. And notice it, it, uh, it measures a voltage because it's seeing that watt. It's giving you the RMS value of that, which has nothing to do with the load. So it's using 0.707. So that's not bad. So we calculated what? Yeah, we measured 5.6. Why is it measuring high? I got my meter swapped around. This is not a negative supply. And I don't see my other jumper. Uh, let's look at it, the oscilloscope. So here's channel 1. So we're going to use this as our common. So now I'm going to put this here. Now my scope lead, once we said this is the is the common, and your other scope lead has a look, it, look here. Right? We'll hook this across the load. Here's the oscilloscope. I'll turn the voltage down a little bit so we get a better look at it. So let's separate channel one. You'll see it. So that's full wave. So full wave. So we deliberately guided the negative alternation up to the top, flipped it around to that diode. Uh, your diodes can be rated. Your diodes are only on for half a cycle, so your diodes are still seeing half the current. Right? You understand that? So my diodes. Uh, so. If this was one amp, I could use, I, if this is two amps, I could use one amp diodes. So that's pretty neat, right? Because why? Because they're only seeing halfway. I mean, the diodes see halfway. They see halfway current. The load sees full way. So this diode's off, then it's off for a half cycle, while this guy's on, then it's off, while this guy's on, while this off, and this guy's on. Now, the, 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 uh, P the PIV rating of the diode is still going to have to be peak. It's still going to have to block peak, right? But not peak 12.6, peak of what? 6.3. When we filter it, it's going to have to drop peak to peak 6.3. No matter what filter we use. And it's humming up here like crazy, but it's working perfectly. Okay, so that's full wave center path. Right, okay. We're going to use this. And it's going to look kind of strange. Uh, the next one is pretty neat, but it requires four diodes. And we call this a full wave bridge. And we're going to use the full voltage of the transformer here. Center tap, center tap, uh, use two diodes connected to the secondary. But remember, if you're going to make a negative supply, you're going to have to swap both diodes, right? You understand. Y'all understand if you only swap one, why you got a short circuit? Because that other diode is not going to be reverse biased anymore. They'll both be forward biased at the same time. And it's going to be right across the dang transformer, and something's going to happen. Either the fuse is going to blow, on our trainers, it probably pop the diode. Uh, hopefully, it don't burn up the transformer. That cost us twenty bucks a piece. I choked when I thought they were ninety nine. I told you that, right? Uh, this is a good picture right here. I told you uh, each cycle. But we already did that. PIV, right? Oh, that was wrong. So what? Uh, so what? What happens? It this has got to be twice. Sorry, I told you wrong. So what happens is when this is negative, right? So that would be this guy seeing the negative peak. But what's on the other side? 
the positive P. So that means the PIV rating on a full wave would have to be P to P. So I'll tell y'all wrong, right? Y'all understand? Because when this is positive, this is negative, which makes this positive, which makes this negative. Well, this positive, right, you understand, would be sitting on this point right here. So that pulse would be sitting right there. Well, what's on this side? The negative. So that means here we would have to do uh, two PIV, but it's still going to be. Uh, so here we would use 12.6, and what would that be? Uh, divided by 0 0.707. So what would that be? No, that's going to be 12.6. So it's going to be 6.3. It is, but it will have to divide by what? 0 0.707. And what's this going to give me? Yeah, but what's, what's it going to give me? It's going to give me VP, which gave me what? 8.9. So what would V peak P be? It's going to be 8.9 times 2. Y'all understand that? Because when we go, when we use that 0 0.707, we're dealing with V peak. So to go from V peak to V peak to peak, yeah, and that, that formula should be on that sheet, you just take V peak and multiply it by what, 2? If you know peak to peak and you want to go to V peak, you take V peak to peak and divide it by. So I'm glad I looked at that because I could go wrong. And then, then it dawned on me exactly what it was. Everybody okay with turns ratio? So this is one to two. So we got 25 volts peak to peak in. What would be, what would be the peak to peak out over here? Huh? No, the, the two's on this side. So what we're doing is we're taking the output on the high side. Right? You understand? So here we're stepping up. So what we're saying is that we don't necessarily have to step down. We could also do what? Step up. And that's what we have on this, this robot right here. This robot runs off 440. We do not have 440 in this building. We got... 210. So what do we have? We had to do what? We had to step it up, right? 420. That's fine. Okay, y'all understand that. So we had to step it up. So we have two step up transformers. You can see the transformer for the uh, for the ABV. It's over here on the floor. The transformer for the big fanic is upstairs in one of the rooms. So we got two transformers over there running two of our robots. Actually, we got more. All these robots right here, that's all these robots right here are 240 robots. So if I looked at the uh, the, 80, the motor man, we'd see a big gray box behind it. What's that? That's a step-up transformer. If I looked at the FANUC, there's a box back there. What's that? Step-up transformer. If I look down in the bottom of the cooper down there, there's a box in there. It's a what? Step up transformer. I say step up every time. I'm into it. So we do step up. We step up sometimes and we step down. What's the advantage of high voltage? Less current to produce power, right? You understand? What's the advantage of low voltage? Safe. Good job, guys. Uh, there's math. There's the input full wave. Negative. That's all we had to do. If I wanted to make this negative, I'd have to swap one. Both diodes. Y'all understand that? Full wave bridge. Bridge rectifier uses four diodes. During the positive half cycle, two diodes. And this is going to save us from a, from a center tab transform. We'll look at the schematic on the power uh, next class. Uh, we'll look at the uh, we'll look at the power supplies in the trainer. We'll tack one of the trainers up. Look at the power supplies. First of all, we'll talk about them. We'll go to the schematic so y'all can actually look at the power supplies. 
I mean, y'all ready to run? During the positive head cycle, two diodes are forward biased, allowing current to flow, while the other two diodes are what? Reverse biased. During the negative two cycles, then they switch position. Are we okay? And of course, that's not y'all's figure. I'm looking at figure 6x6 in the textbook. So the trainer, we have both negative and positive DC, right? So you know in our trainer, we've got a negative supply and we've got a positive supply. So this is not, this is the same thing. So what we do, and don't worry about the polarity of the dots, is that during the positive alternation, this on the, on the output side, this would be positive, this would be negative. When I come over here and follow this wire, notice what it goes to. It goes to an anode and goes to a cathode. So I'm going to take that positive and put it on both of them. Which one's forward biased? Oh, positive, Rick. I'm going to take that positive and put it on both of them. Which one's going to be on? Which one's going to be off? Yeah, D1's going to be what? on, D2 is going to be off. Now we could trace this back all day long and we'll find it's going to, the other side is going to be negative. So here we go. What's going to happen? So current, let's go this way. So here comes this guy. Right? So this is negative. That's going to put a negative right there and it's going to put a positive right, negative right there. So which ones are going to be turned on right here? So this has got a negative on the anode. This guy right here is going to be what? Off. This guy's going to be what? On. Here comes our current. Which way is it going to go? Is it going to go this way or is it going to go that way? Yeah, it's going to go toward D2, right? Here it goes. What's it going to do now? Is it going to go up? No, because this guy's what? Off. So it's got to go this way. Got no other way to go. Trying to, It's trying to find the other side of the supply. Okay, comes down, comes out our ground lead, comes over here. Y'all understand that is that is a wire there. Uh, what's the purpose of that symbol? So I don't have to draw a wire. They're connected together anyway. And that's why we come up with some of these symbols. So that ground wire and that common wire is in there so I can eliminate a bunch of wires in the diagram. Why right? you understand that? But there is a wire there. This happens on me all the time. I thought they were connected together in the trainer. <laughs> I love that. So don't say that. Well, that's not true. Y'all can say it. I'll just tell another class. So here we come. So this would, the bottom would be negative. If the bottom was negative, what would the other side of the uh, resistor be? It would be positive. We hit right here. This guy's not going to go this way because that's where it's coming it's not looking for this side it's looking for the other side right you understand it's looking for its positive it's not looking for itself plus it's turned off so which way is it going to go it'll go up through d1 or follow back to the positive side so that means the top of the the top of that resistor is positive because that's the exit end of the current the bottom of the resistor is negative are we okay? Okay, down here. Notice here they swap polarities. This is negative. This is positive. I'm going to take that negative over here. I'm going to put it on there. I'm going to put it right there. I'm going to take this positive down here, put it right there, and put the negative right there. Oops. Put the positive right there. Okay, guys. There's a negative on the anode. This guy right here is what? Off. There's a positive on the cathode down here. This guy here is off. This guy here is set to go. That guy right there is set to go. Here comes my current flowing from negative to positive. Goes here. Which way it goes? D3. Comes out here. Goes through. Comes up through here in the same direction. This is negative. Flows to this guy. Comes back. Which way is it going? It's not going to go through D1. It's turned off. But it wouldn't go through D1 anyway because it's going back to the polarity it came from. Right? You understand? It's looking for the positive. 
So which way is it going? Yeah, D4 back to here. There we go. Went through it in the same direction. But we don't need a center tab transform. So what you find out, you said, but it takes two dimes. But you'll find out it's a lot cheaper to use two diodes than it is to buy a center tap transform. Y'all understand that? So this guy's used all over the place. I mean, all over the place. We can't use a grounded secondary because we're going to have to use this over here as our common, right? You understand? And your common is over here. It's not on the transform. So we'll have to figure out if the... Uh, if the, if the transformer on the trainer is connected to common, it's real easy to do. We'll just take a meter and put it between the black, between the center tap of the transformer and to the ground. If it measures infinity, then we're okay. If it's not, then we'll have to use one of these guys. And we got enough of them in there. Anyway. So. Here's my 12.6 volts. All we're going to do, of course, is just not connect the center tab. So we're going to use it like it's a 12.6 volt transformer. What am I going to measure across the load? So VRMS secondary. Uh, we're going to use the whole transformer. That's going to be 12.6 volts. Of course, we know now it's a little high. But normally we don't measure it because our calculations are going to be so close. Guys, figure it for me. And I'll hook up the circuit. Uh, what do we want to pop? We want a positive supply or negative supply? Let's start off with a positive supply. Okay, guys, I got the circuit wired. So I wired the circuit. You got it calculated yet? I cheated it. Well, y'all are not going to be able to cheat, but I cheated it. We got it? So, V peak secondary, V peak secondary would be equal to. Uh, 12.6 divided by 0 0.707 because we're using the whole secondary, right? Uh, this is center tap, but I'm just not going to hook it up. I'm not gonna hook it. You don't have to use center tap, but I lost the advantage of a four-way bridge, but, you know, we're, we're doing labs anyway. Okay, so what would V-Peak secondary be? What's that? Yeah, 17, what? 82. Uh, v peak out, which is going to be on the diode side, is going to be 17.82 minus what? 1.4. Why? Because you're going through two diodes, right? Uh, so V peak out would be equal to what? 6 watt? 40, 16.4, okay. So, uh, volts DC is going to be equal to 2 times 16.4 divided by 3.14. So, this is full wave. So, the formula for full wave is 2 dB over 5, right? So, what should we measure? 10.5. Now this 
the four-way bridge is so dang popular and it's used so often that they integrate it into a package. So this is how I achieve it. Let me pull that out first and show it to you. So this is a bridge rectifier. Which is trying to use. So notice you have two leads in the center labeled AC if it focuses. There we go. This is this leads labeled watt minus this lead here is labeled plus. There's four diodes inside this pack. This is the bridge rectifier. That's all we need. Right? All I need is four wires. I need to bring AC into it. It's going to take how I many? Two. And I need to get my DC out. So all I had to do to hook this up. Here's my two AC. Make sure you come in in different vertical lines. Here's my DC minus. I'm using that at the bottom. I'm going to use this as my common. By the way, to get it changed on this, uh, all you do is just switch one. Which one you use? Oh, we just switch one. Which one we use as the common? I'm sorry, here. So I'm taking the minus, I'm bringing it over to this side of the resistor. Here's the positive to this side of the resistor. Right, you understand. And we'll come over here and we'll hook our scope up to the output. And the problem is, is people try to wire the thing like this. I'm going to show you the way it's usually wired here in a second. And it's a lot easier to draw too. That thing diamond it's not easy to draw. And uh where's our meter? I'm gonna take my meter and I still don't see my other jumper. Here's my scope. We won't look at the input anymore. We know what the input looks like now, right? And I couldn't look at the input anyway. Why can't I look at the input with my scope? Because I'd have to move my ground I'd have to put a ground on this side. I cannot do that. As once as I put that black lead right there, then everything's got to be referenced to that, right? You understand that? So here we go. So turn it on. Now I got to hook my meter up. Here's my output on my oscilloscope as soon as it comes on. It's not showing me. My meter. I'll turn it on for just a second. Huh? I got it on DC. So I got AC. Oh, I see it's going. When I plug it back in, I missed my hole. My AC spread, my AC spread, I had them inside, held inside each other. So what happened when I stuck it back in, this lead over here shifted over one hole. So it was no longer lined up vertical. So there's my DC, measure 11.3, what did we calculate? 10.5. And then there's my output. Now my scope's not synchronized because I'm triggering on the channel. I'm synchronizing my scope on the yellow channel. And my yellow channel's not hooked up to anything. So what we'll do is we'll come over here to the trigger menu over here. And then we tell it right here where it says my source of my synchronization is channel 1. I'm going to change this over to channel 2. And then we'll move we'll move the white line up. See the trigger level right there? And now it should freeze. Here's 0 volts right there. Everything's positive. And the voltage is measuring a little high because the output of the transformer is a little high, right? 
but how much did we mess it by? So just using the face value of the transformer, uh, the 12.6 volts, we came up with 10.5. We're actually measuring what, 11 point, I would say. Eleven point two. So that's seven hundred millivolts. Different between our watt, our calculated, and our measured. So if I wanted to be perfectly accurate, I would take my voltmeter and I would measure the RMS output of this guy right here. And then when I measure the RMS, I would use my measured value instead of my value. But why? It's just like in DC, you measured all those resistors. Now, when you measured all those resistors, you were trying to prove Ohm's law. But now we understand tolerances, right? And we understand our math is perfect, but our circuit components are not. But that math is close enough that if you use color-coded values, you use rated values, you get close enough so you know if it's good or you know if it's bad. 700 millivolts, different when calculated and measured. So that means this guy is doing exactly what he's supposed to do, right? So what we'll do next class is we'll, we'll hook up the bridge. I'll show you a better, easier way to hook it up instead of trying to do that. And then once we understand that, then I can show you all three-phase, three-phase DC power supply. You can put a three-phase full-wave full wave bridge power supply, and you don't even have to filter that sucker. Because the other, the other, the other phases fill in all the holes. We don't get pulsating DC out of three phase with a full wave bridge. We get DC. Now it's still unregulated DC, but it's DC. So uh, I'll show you. We don't have any three phase down here. You can see how it works. So what happens on three phase is what this phase fills in the gap between the first flat phase, right? Does that make sense? And then the next phase fills in that gap. So we don't have pulsating DC, and that's one big advantage of taking uh, three phase to DC. Single phase, we're going to always have to do what? We're going to always, somehow we're going to have to fill in this gap. If I'm going to get DC, I'm going to have to fill in this gap, and that's what the filter does. Three phase, you got that other phase coming here and doing what for you? Filling in the gap, and it does a really good job. It gives you really good DC. There's a lot of stuff out of DC stuff out of US Steel that ran right off the three phase line. Especially big DC mode. So there we go, guys. So what do we do, guys? What do we talk about? I know it's time to go. What do we talk about? Half wave, full wave center tap, and full wave bridge. And what do we mean by full wave? We get both alternations. But notice. If I measure this time between this cycle and that cycle, it's going to be 8.33 8 milliseconds because it's running at 120 hertz where my input sine wave is running at what? 60. Y'all understand why? And this is going to become important, especially if you're going to be your own power supply when you calculate that filter. Because on a halfway fire out, on a halfway power supply, the filter's going to have to fill in for 16.7 milliseconds, right? You understand. For a full wave power supply, that filter's going to have to fill that gap for only 8 to 8.3 milliseconds. So means in, in half wave, we're just going to try to get DC out of DC, not pulsating DC, unregulated DC. It would take a lot bigger filter. Okay, guys, see y'all. Y'all have a good break. Next Tuesday. No, we don't do further engagement. We do, we don't do further investigations, but we do do the checkups. So when you encounter a checkup, you'll turn that in, but you'll turn that in by itself. So I'm going to attach that to end lab. Remind me to tell everybody. Turn this off. Now I got to figure out how I got out of this thing while we're How did I get out while I got it?
we sign off the last circuit. I think I've only signed off one circuit. I did put a date on y'all, but. What did I do while ago? Kyle, to get that thing pop up. Okay, well, I popped on my icon at the bottom of the screen. Oh, this one. Oh, I got it. That's it. 